that's my unique thing, right? <laughs> Also, I want to, well, you already know, but I said I'm starting to record these sessions. So if you have any confidential things, don't say. Uh, if we get to a more interactive portion where we're diving into confidential, confidential things, how you doing? Uh, I will turn it off. I will turn it off. You can cut it across. You can cut it across. I'll turn it off and then have us, uh, just like we did the last session, have us dive deeper so we can actually talk about things that are more confidential without it being recorded. All right. Awesome. Your turn. Yeah. Okay. I know. Okay, actually, <laughs> first, let's give them feedback. Let's give them feedback. Any feedback. And, and as I said, the process is, is to one, pitching, uh, two, listening to others pitch because I feel that's a skill too. Um, actually, you should be listening more than talking in any conversation, that's my belief. Uh, and third, learning how to give people constructive feedback um, so they can, we can all get better. So this is some, this really shows that you were listening and you're learning when you can give that feedback. So any feedback? So what's your name again? Salmo. Salmo? Yes. You can call me Chloe. It's easier. Mm -hmm. Your name is Samu, I'm going to call you with your name, right? Samu is very easy. So, maybe just uh, speak a little bit louder, because for example, I mean, English is not my first language, and I mean, it's, sometimes it's hard for me to really understand and have me to focus, but just, just that. So, I have anything else to say? Yeah. No, I see. I totally second that. And as you know, English isn't your first language too, so... <laughs> <laughs> so we understand each other well. <laughs> Anyone else? No? Huh? Yeah, I, the first feedback that uh, I was like wondering that not um, in depth, but activities. And if you have like a couple of phrases or one more word about the activity mm -hmm. and that would be very helpful for me to understand or characterize your words. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Like a reading activity or I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or something unique. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I definitely, I, I, and I see you're getting more comfortable too. That's what I like. And Maggie, you're very comfortable in my opinion. Uh, because you said five seconds and that was, it was still under 30 seconds, but yeah. you can tell it's easy when you think it's going faster than it is. So that was very good. Uh, Samu, what I would say for you, as especially the louder part, especially with your name, mm -hmm. um, and uh, since this isn't your country, so people aren't familiar with their name, we really want people to know your name mm -hmm. and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, I would say, I would like you to work on the wording a bit for, what you're doing mm -hmm. um, or dementia caregivers. Mm -hmm. Just either, whether that's elaborating on that or using a different type of wording, I want, once you say people to get quickly, not to have to think to figure out what is it you're doing. It's, it's much clearer than last time for me, mm -hmm. uh, but let's even work on tweaking that part because those are the two most important parts. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing I say that applies to both of you would be say something interesting about yourself. Mm -hmm say something because I think as, as I've been trying to handle it, it's really easy to forget people's names. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So say something that's interesting about yourself so somebody can won't feel as bad if they remember that interesting fact they can, hey I forgot your name but I know you do this. Yeah. Or, and it'll make it less awkward and people less likely to avoid because you know we all, when I don't know somebody's name I try to avoid them. <laughs> I, I don't want to go and people, oh, you know, I, I really try to, uh, it's a sad thing but I'm more likely to avoid somebody who <laughs> forgot your name. But if I remember something like, hey, oh, you're from, hey, how you doing? Sorry I forgot your name. But if I bring up that interesting fact, you know, I didn't forget them, I just forgot your name. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I would say. That, that's super important to say one or two interesting facts about you. And it's not just for people to remember you. It's also a, a, a potential point for people to connect with you mm -hmm. or connect you with other people who connect with you. Because if somebody has that similar interest in front of you, like, hey, well, let me introduce you to this person. Uh, you two have this in similar. So that's, that's something that's very important to me. Uh, Maggie, actually, I thought yours was very polished. Uh, 
and maybe I'm getting it like really polished. Maybe I'm getting it because it was clear what you're doing. Uh, but I felt you're you're going for now. This is maybe just because I focus more on branding and messaging. I felt what you're trying to communicate. You can tweak that a little bit to be clearer how you differentiate it from other companies. I mean, yeah. other blogs and stuff like that. Focusing really, and for me, the key word I think is more that is interactive, or fun, or more interesting. Yeah. Something around those synonyms. Um, throwing that in there and working on that messaging really get quick. So, oh, this is how I'm different, or this is why I created that. You, you got it across with your story, kind of. I think is a more concise and brighter way can do that. So people are like, oh, okay, yes, I'm looking for that too. Awesome. Your turn. Hi, I'm Sophia Brown. I am a Jamaican by birth, globetrotter by choice, dancer, foodie, and storyteller. I'm a youth development specialist. And I have created a program called the IC program for children, newborn to toddlers. And this program is fun, safe, and a natural way to unlock and boost their emotional intelligence and development. Again, I'm Saf with the IC program for children, newborn to toddlers. I like the way you spoke. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She said EQ is the emotional intelligence. It's oh, much, much, okay. much, much important than the IQ in the future. <laughs> yeah. Well, so as I said, you've made a lot of progress with your confidence in two weeks. So that's good. That's really good. I I like as you, the emphasis you put on certain words, so changing your tone so you're not monotone, that's really, that's a higher level trait. Mm -hmm. uh, what I would say, I would, especially with EQ, like so, some people, but in the point of this is to make the most people understand as possible. So just taking time to say emotional intelligence, because even saying emotional intelligence, most people, not most, many people don't understand what emotional intelligence is. So to break it down to EQ, which doesn't even really translate like it, it's yeah. not the, yeah. so it's, it's, the point is really to be clear and um, memorable in this, clear and memorable. Uh, so that's good. I like how you do all the traits in. You were here last time with Josh, right? Josh was here, uh, tax, tax little. Okay, and one thing I said to Josh, and I think that really applies to you too, which you touched on later, but tying, um, if you're going to say more than one point that's interesting about you, and so, so I'm sorry, you did really well. Because I, I, I get into you and I got into Maggie a bit and I, I go a bit granular um, because I don't want to just step back because you did well, I want to keep pushing me forward. Uh, so, what was I going with this? What you were saying to Josh about when you have more than one point. Thank you, thank you very much. So with that, when, when you say more than, what I told Josh, try to tie it into what you're doing in a way that qualifies you um, to build trust. We'll talk about why trust is so important today in actually marketing, but in a way that builds trust with the uh, people about how you're qualified to do this business or service. So bringing in a little bit earlier, your, maybe your training with child, uh, child care, your, uh, how you're fluent in different languages, bringing that in because you're, you're doing more than, as we said, this is a babysitting. You're, you're, um, this is advanced child care. And I wouldn't even call child care, I call it more like child education. Uh, so adding a point that's interesting about yourself, a personal point that also builds trust in how you're able to deliver the service. And especially if you're saying some, uh, more than one interesting fact about yourself. Any other tips? 
saying that I should go for more reviews online. Yes. And um, I should go for the membership. Mm -hmm. So I did that. I, um, I paid for three more months. I paid for three months of membership. I had an interview and asked the client to give me at least a first impression review online. Um, I will also be looking into some of the reviews that I have are from persons overseas and they could not get onto the system so as to give me a review. So I'm going to see if there's a way to get that sure. going. Okay. Um, awesome. Reading and um, working on diligence, the diligence part of the book. <laughs> Working, yes, we all. Just personal yeah. little things, getting that kind of done, as it said, pure and right. Um, awesome. And then work on other things. Awesome. Now, can you do me a favor and give us a short recap on what we touched on last week? Uh, just, you don't have to do it in any order. Oh. Just what you thought were important points so we can kind of lay the foundation out, fill in anything. All right. Um, in regards to the marketing as a practical theory, we looked at the unique um, and valuable aspects of marketing. It was quality, price, faster, and a fourth one is convenience, because convenience does not necessarily mean that something is faster. We compared businesses, um, for instance, a Walmart and Airbnb and Amazon, and we were looking at what made these companies um, thrive in their category. For Amazon, they were able to specialize in shipping like no one else. They may have started off with just books being unique books, but because of their shipping ability to get things to people faster, they were able to spread out their business and you know, have a lot more than just books today. Uh, for Walmart, that was really about what is cheaper and it's kind of like the place that will come to mind as to what can I find um, at a lower price, I can go to Walmart. Mm -hmm. And then the other place, I mentioned this earlier, Starbucks. Starbucks. Oh, an Airbnb. The Airbnb, um, the questions were asked as to which, what would it have been for us? Uh, why would we choose an Airbnb? Would it be for con uh, price, convenience, uh, two of us said safety, yeah. was an issue later, later and quality so we were looking at a business and saying how as a consumer would you choose starbucks we looked at starbucks we um compared it with dunkin donuts as to <laughs> what separates it um and definitely we were talking about the quality of the customer service in a starbucks the way they change from one demographic area to another and so they really stay in touch with the community and they are different in their different spaces. Um, other things that we looked at um, I think that was it but in regards to looking at those businesses we looked at Amazon versus Barnes and Noble and why Barnes and Noble, although they are great for finding lots of books, they are stuck. They had an opportunity to grow and they didn't take that tech route and now 
everything for them is just on their location. There's more. I don't see them. Yes, so thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, just so, just because I feel this is the foundation of going forward, and all of you will need to understand that now, soon in your business, or things will quickly get out of hand. And the point of that meeting was really to get down the uh, foundation of branding from the, as some people say, three cornerstones faster, cheaper, um, quality, or more quality. I say four faster, more price, speed, uh, quality, and convenience is the fourth one, which convenience ties into safety. Some people for safety and quality, uh, we can talk about that, but really understanding where you position, where you're positioning yourself because that's how you're gonna compete, uh, which gets into line, what's the unique value proposition? How is what you're, the value you're conveying to your customers that you produce different from the value that your competitors are conveying to your customers or your potential customers? So you really need to understand that and focus on understanding that in your own businesses. Now, today we're going to dive into the second after branding, uh, which branding is part of marketing, but now we're gonna dive into the promotional aspect of marketing, which is, uh, so marketing has four features. Uh, according to most marketing experts, uh, it's called the four Ps. Uh, product, which is the product or service you have. Uh, placements, where it's located. Price, uh, how much it costs, of course, and promotion how you advertise, how you communicate your value, things like that. Today, we're gonna to focus on promotion, which most people focus on, but I wanna start you off with actually making sure you understand the objectives of promotion or the things you're looking to get out when you're promoting your product. Uh, I think that's, most people actually only say, hey, we promote to get more publicity. And that is, a, in my opinion, a very bad objective because it's uh, unclear. You, you don't promote to get more you don't promote to get more publicity. You promote to get more profit and more clients. That's why you promote. Um, so I, it, it may seem a little bit different, may seem a minute difference, but it changes your mindset. You're promoting for more sales or more profit. That's that's what that's why you're promoting, and that's how you should look through the lens lens of it. Now, in terms of promoting, I, I see it as there are really Four, four to five reasons, um, four to five purposes of uh, promotion in marketing. Uh, now I have one, one of them, instead of calling it one and two, I'm gonna call it one A and one B. So one A is awareness, right? It doesn't matter if you have the best product in the world if nobody knows about it. Um, I, as I believe that actually most of the, the Things that are number one in the market aren't necessarily the best thing in the market. Uh, for example, McDonald's for many years is number one, right? Don't get me wrong, I love the Big Mac. <laughs> well, I used to love the Big Mac, I don't eat it anymore really. But uh, there's been much better burgers than the Big Mac, right? Uh, so, but McDonald's just, have, they have a better promotion and on top of that, they don't just, it's, it's a service, I'm not gonna get deep into it, but I want you to understand about building awareness, letting people know you exist, mm -hmm. um, and don't. Now the second thing, I'm gonna dive a little bit more into that, but I wanna run through, uh, not the second thing, 1B. So 1A is uh, of building awareness, 1B is building trust. Uh, 1B is building trust, and I'm gonna to touch back on this a little bit later, we're gonna dive deeper into this because I think that's something people skip a lot. Uh, so I'm gonna come back to this. Uh, number two, and number two is Building preference, right? Um, so why will somebody choose you over your customer? I mean, over your competitor. Why is somebody choosing you over another restaurant? Why is somebody choosing you over a substitute? So it's not people you're directly competing with. It's also things that can substitute for your service. Uh, so that's number two. And then the third slash fourth thing, which uh, if we're counting one A and one B as different, the uh, third thing, slash fourth thing is building advocacy and after building trust i think this is the most important thing to do build an advocacy 
and I'm going to explain why building advocacy is about getting people, other people to promote your products. The number one thing that the fastest way to convince people or the thing that's going to get people to most likely buy is hearing it from a, a friend recommending your service or somebody you trust recommending your service. Now, building advocacy is about that, getting people's friends to recommend their ser your service to them. Getting pe uh, pe people who look up to these people to recommend your service or your product to them. So building advocacy is something that I really see spoken about directly, but it's super important. All right, so let's jump back to, I'm actually gonna talk about building trust before I talk about building awareness. Now, uh, can anybody talk about as you know, I don't like speaking, making it a seminar. Why do you think building trust is so important? Why does it matter? Because people are spending money and they want, they want it to uh, make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but why? Well, because you want them to come back. So, I mean, it's like a relationship. I mean, you don't, I mean, you don't want to buy something if you don't trust someone. I mean, it's to, me, to me, it's a trust is like very behind of our own consciousness. So even though something happened environmentally or some other time occasion, other things, but a lot of times trust kind of uh, drives the motivation of mm -hmm. the person's behavior. That's what I see. Well, I think trust comes. Well, trust when you trust something then it becomes predictable. And so if it's predictable, then um, people prefer to go to you than to try something new. And so they, they prefer to try something they've, um, you know, people like to be regulars at restaurants, for example. And so if, if they get a consistent experience there, then they'll, they'll be like lifelong customers. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess once you like, change that experience, maybe the chef changes, then you like kind of lose some of their trust. Um, and so it, it can be very, so it's just kind of how much predictability is there in that thing. Okay. Okay. So I, I like these answers and I'm gonna push back a little bit. And I think part of the reason why I, I, uh, I actually believe you were onto something with that when we look at it, I do all these things. I want you not to look at it through you, but look at look at it as if you're a client. Look at it as if you're a customer. Always think of yourself as a customer because that's gonna let you understand why they're doing something. Why do you do something? And I think it's easier to explain certain things if we go up in price point. Um, where we don't need to trust something much if we're spending one to ten dollars, right? Once you spend it starts spending twenty to hundred, it's a different level. A hundred to thousands is different. And over a thousand, you need a lot of trust. Now, what makes you trust something? What would make you spend or allow you to spend over one thousand dollars for something? What what type of trust do you need to have in that thing? That if something won't happen, they can help us, like customer services. Or mm -hmm. So customer service. For me, I think it's like validation. So like, I think one of the things that I've really purchased over a thousand dollars for my laptop. Mm -hmm. And you know, and knowing that, you know, say my first laptop, like having a, a MacBook, like knowing that, you know, that this, this is a valid product, like from other people and like, you know, just researching the company that's what made me like, all right, I'm gonna buy this. What do you mean by valid? Huh? What do you mean by valid product? So from people who have used the product before or like from my own experience, like for instance, like one of my best girlfriends when I was a kid, she had a MacBook, but it was back when they had the color, like clear top, but I loved using her computer. Like I loved the experience and everything sure. of using it. So later on when I went to college and I got a MacBook, like I already knew that this is a, like to me it was validated because of um, my experience with her and also like my friends had it and I just, but I used it myself. So mm -hmm. that's what allowed me to know that I'm gonna buy this. Okay, so what trust factor for you is you, you trust the experience that you will have? Yeah. You believe you'll have a good experience? Yeah. Okay, enjoyable experience. Okay, that's one. I'll say a second thing if you're spending over quality. I think uh, you spoke about that too. Quality, it's not gonna break. It's not going to break easily. Uh, and then you spoke about service. If it does break, you'll fix it, right? 
they'll fix it. But these are these are things that we uh, left. But we wanted at different price points. People expect different things. However, I want you to start thinking about how can I build trust. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your reputation? You you found from a friend your experience mm -hmm. using it as young and seeing you like it. What's your reputation with other people? Are people vouching for you? What are your client testimonials? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you believe um, makes somebody lose trust? You know, so you talked about predictability, actually, Henry. I wanted to touch on that. So with um, some like foodies, for example, they don't always go to the same restaurant. They like different experiences, right? So uh, in some restaurants, uh, I guess it's rare, but some there's a there's a three star Michelin restaurant I know of that constantly changes its menu, consistently changes. It. It's it's really one of the things they bring up in the brand. So for you, is is predictability always a facet of that? Well, in that case, I would say you're buying the novelty, and if the novelty is predictable, then that's still it. We trust that brand mm -hmm. to be novel. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yes, and that's all. I, that's what I wanted to tease out. Uh, that that predict is not always sameness of the product you receive. Sometimes it's sameness of experience, uh, sameness of service, things like that. All right. So now that we've teased that out, let's jump on to uh, creating awareness. Right, um, so you build trust. Now, this I are the reason why I listed it differently, and then I spoke about them differently is because I want I don't believe this. Uh, there's a one size fits all which you should do first: build trust or build awareness. Um, sometimes it's good to just go off and try building awareness because through building awareness, trying to get people to buy you, find out reasons why they will buy for you and why they won't, what they need to trust you, whether they already trust you. Um, how you scan your marketplace, building awareness is uh, it's good so you can start actually trying to get customers and learning how to build your business. Uh, and also, I don't want a lot of people just work, work on building trust and that becomes uh, an excuse for not starting your business earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that, that becomes an excuse for not starting your business earlier. So now, how would you say you build awareness? What are ways to build awareness? Word of mouth. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Word of mouth. Marketing. How so? Print, radio. Awesome. Billboards. Okay. Social media. Mm -hmm. Liars. Sending out emails. <laughs> Liars. Yes. Emails. Yes. All right. Now. Don't remember this is being recorded, so don't say anything confidential. Let's let's break it down to each of your businesses. What's what you think is a good way to build well, uh, build awareness for your businesses? Uh, for my type of business, it is um, having my work play out in public spaces where others see me mm -hmm. and they see the difference. Mm -hmm. And I have done a lot of jobs from that. Okay, uh, is if. I want to really think if this is something you want to do off camera or not. Or oh, what no. you mean? What you mean in public spaces? Like the playground, a gymnastics class, music class, what, wherever it is that I have my clients. Mm -hmm. um, the work that I do with that child in a public space sells me mm -hmm. right there. Awesome. That's good. That's very good. Uh, and that's that's one as I said, awareness. Let people see what you do and why you're good at it, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times, people ask me how I got. Other than people telling other people about what I do, is I go to a conference, a networking event, and just ask people, "What's your biggest problem?" and start giving them suggestions. Mm -hmm. and then they're like, "Oh, what you do?" I'm like, "Oh, yes, I'm a business consultant. I do marketing consulting." And people are like, "Oh, okay," and that that builds trust because you demonstrate your value. You're not you're not just trying to sell them. They they see they see what you're doing and and that's I think that's one of the best ways just to let people see you. Uh, so building awareness through doing. That's what you're doing in public. All right, everyone else. Um for me personally, um so formally as a blog at this moment, and so instead of just having like redirecting people just to my website. I send out my posts every single Tuesday to everybody on my email list so they can actually read the content and I feel like 
that builds trust, number one, because I'm consistent, and number two, it builds awareness because people are fami like familiarizing themselves with the content, um, and, um, and most of my traffic comes from shares that I found out. So people share my emails with other people, and then that builds traffic back to my website, so. Advocacy. Yeah. awareness is a very difficult part than I thought so I <laughs> so uh, before I do uh, my own business I am kind of helping my uh, colleagues more and then my colleague is um, paying like $350 for the uh, taking part in our eye for, for um, a participant for the research for our research I thought that we're paying a lot right the $350 is a lot but then it was, and I was like, first time I thought that I can just hand out the flyers. And it's $350 probably that everybody wants to do. But then I realized that when I really face, I can just brainstorm and say things. But then when I really have to do, we face a challenge. So it's, it's interesting. Like we've been doing it for a year, but then it, it does not go it, it does not go the way that it's supposed to go and we plan. A lot of understanding. Yeah, so for example, the uh, problem of, uh, yes, we have a flyers, right? And we are paying $350 for one MOI. However, um, I thought that we are paying a lot and we can uh, distribute uh, some places and I thought that people will quickly come. However, um, finding the place, we go to the um, uh, uh, food meal, um, some, some places like church or some mm -hmm. places like the nursing home and um, other places, but then it's not that easy to even we hire a person to give out the flyer. So you, need, so you need someone to come in and do an MRI for $350? Yes. Okay. So you're paying people $350 to yes. do what? For them to come in? To for for uh, doing the MRI. Oh, and, and, how, and how long? I mean, that $350 lasts for how long? So it's not that uh, I thought that we were paying a lot. <laughs> and then it was not easy, but it's not that easy that I cannot even articulate what is the problem. So we hired someone to distribute the flyer and designated one. But then it's been four months, uh, we still only need to do uh, one day. So, uh, thank you for asking that. That was a good question. Thank you for asking uh, for her to clarify. So, I think this is this is what. So, awareness is it's not only uh, about building awareness; it's giving awareness to the right people. Um, and I think right now it, it doesn't seem to be a strategy in terms of you, your. Uh, so, if we go back, the essential. The essential job of whoever you have on marketing, um, well, this, if you're strategizing, you're trying to figure out where can you find a big pool of people who want your service, right? Um, because it's easier to get large numbers. It's cheaper usually to get large numbers than small doing it individual. So where people most, and I call this the um, the watering hole phenomenon, right? So if you're if you're in the if you're in the uh, savannah, if you're um, on the plains, if you're and you're um, and that line is looking for the that's why you always they look around the watering hole because that's usually where all the animals come to gather in. So in marketing, you want to figure out where your clients are gathering, where they're gathering around, and you made the assumption that it's at church. Uh, we went. We went many other places like a fair, school mm -hmm, fair, mm -hmm, school, mm -hmm. uh, many places. Mm -hmm. but somehow, it doesn't work. Yeah. So <laughs> I think what you really have to dive down because I think um, because you're paying $350 you just assume anyone would come in which uh, right since you're that which well, it will not be that difficult than exactly. other other research projects but yes uh, but 
I still don't, I think that would make most people come in for $350. I don't know why they're not coming in. Um, um, well, it's making me think of um, the work of a, um, a mobile, mobile, that's how I say, um, lab that does sonograms. And what they did is that um, they are pro-life and they placed themselves by a pro-choice building. And what they were saying to girls is, um, how about just coming in and listening to your baby's heartbeat? So that watering hole effect is in regards to going to a place where that specific client is going to be gathered. So these are women who they're not quite sure if they want to have an abortion or not. And here is an opportunity free of charge here you just walk in, no one will ask you questions, no one will take any information from you. They do the sonogram mm -hmm. and um, four out of five people who hear the child's heartbeat will not go through with it. Mm -hmm. So I think part of your planning, you need to really locate where it is that you need to take this so that you're not just spending $350 for only three hours and you're not getting persons, you know, or notified. Yeah, and even, and so sometimes it's great, great, and that's a really great analysis. Sometimes it's not only um, what you're announcing, but how you're saying it, mm -hmm. how you're saying it. And sometimes you have to change what you're offering too. So I'll look at it, it it's weird, to, it's really weird to me that people aren't coming in for $350. So what I would do, I would even change the whole approach and I would think, hmm, Let's see, okay, let's see if we change it to a mobile unit. MR, I know it's harder with an MRI, it's a big machine, but if somehow you're able to get a mobile unit, put it in some center, uh, especially poorer neighborhoods because they don't have access to healthcare. And if you, so bring a mobile unit and put a sign, big signs outside the mobile unit. They come in, set appointment today, right now, you can get an MRI. You can get an MRI, so all people have to do is walk in. Then you can even lower the price to $100. And you use that prop to run the space and all of that and people just walk in so that's what i would change the whole look of that that's what i would do um, yes so awareness so now let's talk, dive a little bit more into where and that's what we would we yours was a little bit different it was actually a good example but actually it doesn't work because it's not working so but what it does can take us down the path is uh Finding the pools, so finding where your customers hang out with. Uh, and so for, that depends on demographics, so different social media types are better for different demographics, male, female, age. Like if you're going very young, it's Snapchat. All the generation is Facebook. Uh, professionals, LinkedIn. Uh, so just thinking about it, it's not just where you're going, but what, what type of people are on that platform and why they're on that platform. Right? It's easier to promote certain types of services on different platforms. For example, Instagram is more is better for visual type services. Mm -hmm. Right? You can get up, but it's really it's a photo video type thing, so it's better for digital type services. So think about that. Also, if you're going international, while Facebook may be dying over here, it's still very popular overseas. Mm -hmm. So if you have a product or service that you're doing around the world, it, it may make sense to use Facebook ads more than you use other things. Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so, so that's that. All right. So now let's say let's try to figure out what's the best platforms for your businesses. Now, platforms or or whether it's radio, whether it's TV, uh, whether it's flyers. What do you think is the best for your businesses? Thank you, Maggie. Means going to be Instagram. I'm sure. Because well, like you said, I mean, you know, it's visual, so I exactly. mean, uh, to show people, for example, uh, it is the house that you have right now, but mm -hmm. I can change the structure or delimit your space, and this is the option, so I have some time maybe to show, because I'm, a, sorry, for people who don't know, I'm an interior designer, I want to do a business support, I mean, to have my company in interior design, mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> I mean, I have to show sometimes the before, before and after, and maybe also blog. And I'm sure more. 
because when you have clients and they like what you do, sometimes they can talk to other people um, at the end of that. Mm -hmm. Now remember, it's not just bit, you have to also what age age group you're targeting. Yeah, I know. What age group you're targeting, um, and whether you're targeting males or females or both. Both. Okay. Um, so I would say with that, uh, you also may want to look at Pinterest. No, I don't. Like. Hmm? I don't like Pinterest. You don't like Pinterest? It's exactly. but it's not. Oh, no. That's where they are. Like I, I'm, yeah. I'm a big Pinterest user because I'm a visual person and like interior design. Like I, but have that's a board nothing just interior design. That. Just yeah. not, I mean, people think it's just decoration, but it's not that. I'm an interior architect, so I mean, I'm doing structure and everything. Mm -hmm. And people who go to Pinterest, I think they're gonna think that I'm gonna put a carpet or kind of the walls. I mean, yeah. that's not my thing. I mean, that's not what I want to do. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. It's fine. And I think it's good that we knock this out here or try to walk down this road. And so I think one of the things that I start off with, we have to think out of the shoes of our clients mm -hmm. and what they like, not what we like. Because believe me, I would not be doing a lot of things if it was just what I like. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes we have to do what they like. Two, so I, I think that's what just. So I, I talk about awareness and talk about promotion, but what we did with her. What I just did here, even though it was um, in a short period of time, we're focused on the story itself and also mm -hmm. different elements. So it's not just about awareness, but it's how everything int interacts. So now I'm going to focus on the story. You have to, if you don't want people just, like, you have to explain to them um, through whatever story you have for your brand, through whatever message, what's your process, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not just curtains. You have to, you have to really show them different things and really explain. Oh, this is all we do, and this is how everything works together. Because if you just put up a finished room and compare side by side, you don't show them. Hey, this is what we're thinking about. Mm -hmm. That's what they're going to think because that's what they're being told. Um, so that's another way you differentiate yourself through the story and through the different posts that you create, the different videos that you put out, the articles that you write, things like that. All right. So, so you can't change your mind. Re-educate the population. Exactly. So Instagram has a function, uh, does Instagram have a function for promotion and the marketing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speaking of like Facebook has a marketing, sometimes you have to pay and uh, yeah. mm -hmm. has a lot of marketing. I'm not really familiar with Facebook about marketing and I'm like, also, I tend to not really like Facebook nowadays. But uh, apparently, Instagram now is going high at the app of do any things, I mean, marketing or whatever. But all the time, I have this visual, I mean, I was visualizing myself doing like a blog because I mean, oh, I mean, a website because I thought that it was just that. But I don't really know now. That's yeah, why I'm it does here. not have any advertising function. Mm. It's not, no? It's a great it does. I mean, it does. But it's not as robust as Facebook yet but it's, it's building up. And also Instagram has, um, it's less flexible than it's, it's videos and posts and stories and things like that. Facebook is more flexible even, but there's trade-offs, but Instagram is getting better and they're doing more advertising. Even if, I don't know if most of you noticed during the last month, even during the last couple of weeks, you see it add much more. Mm -hmm. uh, Instagram, it used to take a longer cycle to see an ad, but ads are popping up more frequently now on Instagram. Yeah. Would you suggest for her to start a YouTube channel as yes. part of the um, re-education of population and probably have that as a link in what other platforms you may have? So for instance, if you video yourself working on a space, explaining how interior architecture is different from just throwing a pillow and a carpet down. Um, and having that as maybe an ongoing link that maybe you have um, a process, maybe you're doing a whole house where you're gonna focus on one room for two weeks and you just go through showing how something is completely changed. Um, maybe that could be something. As I know well. some people sometimes they're out doing vlog. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And the thing is that, I mean, interior design, I mean, nowadays, I mean, you can have a degree, but after you have to get a certificate. So even for me, for example, I cannot really say that I'm an inter in architect because I need to be certified or whatever. I okay. don't know if I understand that. But is that, not anybody can do that. So can I you, think- 
Can you, sorry, can you use the word trained versus certified? Trained? Trained versus certified. Can you say, I am a trained oh, interior yes. architect versus saying I'm a certified? Because that's another way of getting around the loop. Okay. <laughs> if you've had some training, you can say you're trained. <laughs> if you get the paper, then you can but say you're certified. But the customer is of, of YouTube, you know, they don't, uh, for me, I don't much care about the certified or trained, and if I like it, I like <laughs> it. <laughs> so show me your YouTube. <laughs> So I think you hit on two great points. Um, one uh, is it you shouldn't use just one platform. It's going to be multi, your strategy is going to be a multi-platform based strategy, right? Uh, for now, just start off with one because it's hard enough to handle one. So start off with one, the one that's most likely to get you sales, get you clients, build your brand equity. You just start with one and focus on one. But eventually, you want to branch out to several different platforms as it makes sense for your brand, okay, for your company. Uh, two, messaging. I, I think uh, with that said, right now you're not trying to get anybody to buy anyway to be certified, right? Mm -hmm. So you can still build up a pool, just like you have your subscribers already on your mailing list. What you're doing is building up that list, subscribers, following, building up that early because mm -hmm. you're going to get more comfortable, your brand's going to get bigger, and you're building that trust, building that trust and building that pile of clients later on when you're ready to launch, you're like, hey, I'm taking more new clients now uh, who would like to come in and then instead of waiting a month, two, three, five months down the line, maybe you'll get one in a couple of weeks. Uh, so it's building that up now and it gets you more comfortable, especially when you're not selling something, there's less pressure on you right now. Right? So you get more comfortable, there's less pressure, you're just doing it. You're just doing it and then you can collaborate with people. This, you know, I'm going into other, um, you can collaborate with people, but there's many different things you can do now. Uh, that you don't have to wait to do, all right? But I'm glad you're thinking about all of this. Awesome. Yeah. Ladies in the back, you want to talk about what you could use for your business? I'm literally writing no, no, I know. something no. on <laughs> Instagram right hmm? now. What you think would be best for your businesses? Um, definitely Instagram. Instagram. Um, organically, it's been growing, and I'm like, oh, praise the Lord. I feel like it took like 10,000 years. Um, so Instagram, possibly YouTube. I did think about that, but I don't know how to attract an audience on there just because I don't know if the audience that I'm trying to reach is on YouTube, right? So last night I went through like a process um, in understanding my community because I want to serve my community first and then go abroad um, to Manhattan or wherever else. Um, and I realized that um, when I was looking um, at joining my community board meetings um, that like 57% of people in my community are single families, right? Um, there are moms who are about the age of 16 to 25 who have kids, but a lot of people over that are, are pretty much single. So my neighborhood is a pretty single neighborhood, especially now because it's being gentrified even more and more. Um, and it's like, okay, does that mean that my community is not here? But then I see pregnant people sometimes and I'm like, you guys are here? I'm confused. Like the internet's saying one thing, but the ground level is saying another. So I'm like, I don't know where to find them, to be honest. Um, I ask people on the block, like, yo, where where y'all, where, where pregnant people be at? And they're like, oh yeah, the Wick Center. I'm like, oh, okay. So like, just I think for now, word of mouth and Instagram has been helpful. Um, I passed out a few cards and the first question they asked me is, oh, are you on Instagram? And I'm like, okay, I think Instagram is where it's at for right now. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, that's good. I, I, I yeah. like that you're asking these questions, where the people are located, uh, to figure out where they're hanging out. Uh, I don't know what the WIC center is, but I would say go to more clinics for yeah. you. Go to more clinics um, for people doing prenatal. Yeah. Uh, Things like that, talking to more doctors. Yeah. Talking to more doctors who serve your community. Is it weird that I'm intimidated? This is just like a personal thing for me that I'm intimidated by them no. because I've had weird experiences as a doula with them. So, oh, like, yeah. I don't know if it's because I've had really crazy experiences with them where I'm like, eh, I'll be okay. I'll just talk to the client. <laughs> or if it's because um, it's like a, I don't know. 
No, that's fine. You have that, but you're, um, this is what we're all working on. We're going to get over those weird experiences and push through. In regards to the population that you're looking at, mm -hmm. um, because I understand a little bit of the work that mm -hmm. you're doing, um, I would say do not concentrate mm -hmm. on your community for income. Mm -hmm. Rather use them as a platform to be able to serve them. Because That's more than thinking. likely, yeah. they are not going to be able to afford a doula yeah, ever. Yeah. So in regards to your branding, you need to look outside mm -hmm. of your community. Um, you definitely, I find as a doula, you definitely need to have videos. You need to have mm -hmm. people who are willing to video the birth of their child with you working with them mm -hmm. get mm -hmm. someone who can really work well on videos to give you the tone of the music the mm -hmm. colors everything because that's what a lot of mothers are using they are literally just searching videos and mm -hmm. whoever looks like they've had the best birth experience mm -hmm. in natural birth they are already like okay where's this person how can i find them Right. Um, and in New York, I don't know if the number has changed, but there have only been 20 um, home birth midwives. midwives. Yeah. And it's very difficult to get connected to one of them, but if you can, if you're so intimidated by doctors, although yeah, I'm we're gonna connected. have to get over that one. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm already uh, connected <laughs> with a few but, midwives. Um, yeah. If there's a midwife that will kind of like take you on the her wing and mm -hmm. allow you to go to birth and um, even if they want to call your midwife in training, mm -hmm. whatever it is, but you really have to get an audience of people who have money to spend mm -hmm. right. and yeah. they're looking for I really like uh, the way that you are important about the being with little free training people like in the school. Two hundred people <laughs> registered mm -hmm. for the baby free. You can just go there after the class. Just keep up with it. Yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, it's like, um, like I know, and it's and crazy because it, it I have your time for the training too. I mean, definitely. yeah. Um, the thing is, it's like I've been doing. This is what this whole book is for. Cause I've been going to trainings and stuff like that. I went to training yesterday. I'm like, I am tired. Um, but I realized. My main foundation is childbirth education. That, I'm a teacher at heart. So when I got trained for that last week, I was like, oh, I think this is where the money is at. It's not so much in the doula practice so much. I think it's in me literally teaching people what it's looking like and how I can go about it. And you want um, care specialist. Uh, they no. have a training. They have a I went to holistic newborn okay. yesterday, but I think like, teaching is my niche kind of and from that i'll get clients like does that make sense mm -hmm. so it's now it's like okay do i start partnering with insurance companies now so that i can so people can come to me and be like word like uh does does this cover insurance and i'm like does it like let's call an insurance company so we can get it together well you um, have to build trust with the insurance of course companies to be yeah able to get under. yeah I would have to, there's there's one so far that came to TSC, okay. and I'm like, I want to see what they can do, um, just to be like, oh yeah, she's a childbirth educator, they kind of are under midwifery, or doula yeah. training, okay, like, covered, like, that's what I'm looking into, but I'm not really sure, so, I think that's where I'll get the clients, mostly, but thank you guys, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome, and I think the, what you're talking about, just to provide further clarification is um, you're trying to build an expertise. So uh, right. position yourself as an expert. When you train people or mm -hmm. you teach people, you position yourself as an expert in that field. And through that, it's easier to get recommendations now. So right. Just mm -hmm. wanted to make that clear. Like, yeah. Uh, oh, so that is a thing. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So we can go on. We can have a, actually a whole segment on building awareness, but I'm going to move forward to the next point, which is building preference. Okay, so while I said people have to trust you in order to buy, buy your service, uh, building preferences, whether people like you, that's why they'll buy you over somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, also why they will 
uh, go through inconveniences for you. Let's say some, all of us have gone to maybe a restaurant that's a little bit further away because we enjoy it more than something that's closer to us or a store or a product or a concert or anything. Uh, like even TSC, you come all the way from the Pokemon, right? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so, so this is when you. This is why when building preference, it's so strong. When you do that, people will be willing to forego certain aspects in order to purchase from you yeah. and keep you. Uh, so that's what. So how, let's talk about. Let's think about it for you. Why do you buy certain things? What do you prefer about them? What do you like about them that makes you buy certain things? And then let's apply it to your businesses. Mm. Aesthetic. Mm -hmm. For example, what business? What product? I like home decor. So, or decor. I don't know what you guys say. I'm sorry. Um, I I really enjoy looking at IKEA for some reason. I know their stuff is cheap. My mom always began on me for that, but it's just so nice to look at. I'm like, but it's so pretty. Why wouldn't you want this in your house? Because it's cheap. That's what my mom would say. It's cheap. And I'm like, but it's so nice. Um, and the way how that, the layout in Ikea, layout in Ikea is fire. Um, yeah, so when I look at it, I'm like, oh, this is nice. And even the wisdom of how they create and style their pieces is, is really cool too. You don't see a lot of people that have Swedish design like that. Yeah. Is there space that you can? Yep, especially for New York. That's why I'm always like, mm -hmm. Awesome. Anyone else? Why'd you buy something over something else? Mm -hmm. Aesthetic, you, you like the feel of it more. It's one thing. When something is, I don't know how you say, but you look comfy, for example, I mean, I prefer buying. I'm gonna say bug shoes, mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. um, because I mean it's really comfy for me. Because for example, I mean I have issues with my uh, feet, so now I know that this brand is good. I don't have issues to buy these shoes and another brand, so I don't know, think that it's comfy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I'm like a pretty practical shopper now, so if I can get a lot of uses out of something, I would prefer, it doesn't even matter the price, I would prefer to buy something that I can get a lot of uses that has longevity versus something that won't last, so. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So even with these three things, right, we see different things, and I, I want to pound this point in. Each of you have a different preference, right, for why you pick something. Uh, one is aesthetics, new is quality slash life cycle slash uses. <laughs> <laughs> and for you, it's country. Well, I won't say country to aesthetics, but us. Is those two quality and aesthetic. I'm looking at the two. <laughs> <laughs> so you bring them on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 really on that. But, but even in that layer, right, you still have preferences, what you prefer. Yeah. Comfortable. Quality or aesthetics? You have to. You oh, only can I'm, pick one. I'm putting everything on. Mm -mm. You only can pick mm -hmm. one. Everybody. Quality. Everybody quality. Straight. Yeah. quality. Straight up. Straight. Is it better for what? Hmm? That's true. That's a very. It depends. Oh, okay. No, it depends. Different things. We have different purposes on. Okay. But are you all sure it's quality? No. Over. No, it's not going to be quality for everyone. It depends mm -hmm. on what it is. When it comes exactly. to my skin and hair, it's going to be quality. Oh, exactly. right. When it comes to my clothes, I really don't care. All right. <laughs> Good. So now we're touching into another point that it changes, which we touch depending on the. So let's think about it. with your business. What what are going to be the factors that make people prefer you over others? Where are you going to position yourself? <laughs> That's a good question. Mm -hmm. For my business, there's a uh, uh, responsiveness and availability of our licensed medical worker or social worker mm -hmm. and um, the whole medical. Mm -hmm. So it's respon uh, responsiveness of uh, service. Like we do training, we do partners, we do the 
perfect. Good. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was say, one thing that pops into my mind is um, relatability. Um, I think that people, most of my feedback from people, they talk about how when they read my content, they can really relate to it. It's very conversational. And, um, and so it's not like, remember earlier when I was giving the pitch and I said like, you know, um, you know, there's so many devotionals out there that are awesome, but you know, I want something that speaks to me. And I feel like in a lot of the feedback, feedback that I get from people, they're like, you know what, you know, I, I love your, your content, but it's also very personal. Like it's like I'm talking to a friend, but that's exactly how I write. Like I, I won't write something that it feels like if I'm talking to someone who's not my customer. Like I have a person that like, you know, if I wouldn't say this to this person, then I wouldn't, I won't write about it. And um, so a lot of people talk about like it being so relatable and it's like really conversational. Okay. So I don't know if that's... No, that's good. It's a conversation. You're talking with somebody sitting yeah. at them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So now I'm going to push back a little bit on you because okay. as, as this... So you talked about... Um, so this is another thing. It's good. You have feedback. So you know what some people like, right? Maybe you know what most people like. Um, now with all businesses, we have to make a choice. Are we going to choose that and position ourselves to do that? Was there another thing that's of greater importance? You know that the people who didn't give you feedback, what did they actually want? Yeah, right. that's 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 the challenge now in figuring it out. Like, um, because I don't really know other than the feedback that I get, mm -hmm. and you know, Henry and I are always talking about this. Like, I don't know the other people, so I've been trying to, um, the whole point of like starting this Instagram and stuff, like getting to know my customer base more. Like, I actually have an ad going right now, just to like. It, it, I have a reason behind it because it, I'm not spending a lot of money at all. It's six dollars, but it was just in my mind to test something out and to see like, um, to see like uh, how it will do. Um, so yeah, yeah that's, so that's good. Do, my point do that. About that's what find the customers. Yeah. I would make it, recommend all of you do that. Go out. Um, you can get a. I made a video about that on my channel. If you want more details, you can go into that. But it's called uh, social media advertising cheaper than you think. So you can do a three dollar a day campaign. Yeah, do that. Mm -hmm. Do that and just see whether it's working or not. At least we get comfortable doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so don't feel, just test it. See how it's going. You'll learn. Get feedback. Yeah. See what people prefer. Because the reason why I ask you, um, and we're diving into this with the preference, uh, this is strategic. And um, so, as I said, mm -hmm. beginning branding and a brand um, consists of two things: a clear message and a consistent message, right? Uh, so when you position, you want to make sure everything is consistent. Especially, you might have to make some tweaks, some pivots, some deviations, but preferably that will be done with a clear mind looking forward. Now, the reason why you can be two things, but it's hard to be two things in people's heads. People usually remember, remember people think of you in one way, specific mm -hmm. way. Maybe they have secondary traits they think of you, but they have one. This is this person. This mm -hmm. is the one thing that really stands out about that person. I mean, it's just. We don't have cluttered lines. There's too many people we know to think about somebody in all these a matrix rather than a single right. point. Uh, so, and I'm going to touch back on to an example we talked about in our last meeting uh, in branding where we were talking about how Amazon beat uh, Barnes & Noble. Right? Barnes & Noble was bigger, had a lot more money. Uh, they positioned themselves on M M versus Amazon. They did popular books and big retailers in the in retail stores and physical stores where you can quickly go and get them. These popular book Amazon positions itself on niche uh, books that very few people look for, um, spread out. Um, mm -hmm. They ship it to no, no retail locations. Mm -hmm. Now it seemed like from everybody outside, five, 10 years, oh, this is Barnes & Noble Group, they're doing this, this is the way to go. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually we saw as course rolls as the internet spread, as logistics got better, it was actually Amazon's way of doing things, focusing on the niche categories that actually made them outstrip Barnes & Noble. Mm. So with that said, really think about not just now, but five, 10 years down the line, what is it better to, for, to be relatability um, or maybe interact, um, being interactive? I think that's something you spoke about, being uh, not being a static blogging platform. Can I say this better? You said you want people not just to read it, but to have things to do. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah, yeah. so focusing on doing, maybe, so figure, or maybe it's not one of those two things, but really figuring, 
what what do people really care about? What what's something they're not getting or they're not getting adequately on these other platforms? So what is God? Well, not or what is God leading me to do on that? Mm -hmm. So just I would just want. Just, um, I was saying, um, so I think that I actually am my customer, um, which is what I, how this all started out because um, just a short, short like story about it is like the For Holy wasn't actually For Holy before. I published the book three years ago and I started the website to promote it. And then, so what happened was it was an interactive journal, but it was strictly just personal development. So I'm like a big personal development fan. So it was, um, it wasn't like religious or anything, and this is all my fault, believe me, a terrible failure story, but it's also a success because of it. Um, but um, yeah, and so I realized that, um, okay, I just lost my train of thought. I don't even know what I'm saying. Oh, you're, following, um, you're telling us oh, the story. Yes. Wait, no, 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 wait, keep talking. You're wait, telling us the story of why uh, for only wasn't what it wasn't. It came out of your personal experience. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. So like I created, so the book before I published it, it was more so just like I wanted, um, I wanted to find like um, some self improvement books that were like interactive and like different journals, like I like guided questions and stuff, like things that were a little bit more fun. And I wanted people to like, I wanted to really inspire friends to really work on themselves and stuff, but to do it in a more creative and fun way. And I couldn't find anything out there like that, so I created mm -hmm. it myself. So that's kind of how that, and then that led to Fort Holy eventually. And now I want to do it in the Christian um, circle. So, um, so what I'm saying is, like, I look for these things and I don't see them. So that's kind of why, like, I feel like you know, re um, relatability was one of the big things that I appreciated when people said that because I'm like, oh, interesting. Like, it took me a long time to find my voice. Like, I tried to be like everybody else, and I was a robot. You know, I didn't have anything that stood out. But finally, finding my voice and like people, yeah, I think they say that the um, the content has a lot of quality in it. But that's not. There's so many places, like I said, you can go to for quality content. You know, if, I think that for you would come to me if you want something that's like fun. You know, and I keep pushing back on the word fun or creative because fun, that's yeah. what I. Yes. You know, that's me. That's what I wanted to create. You know, and that's what um. Eventually, I hope after testing out what people actually want, that that's what I I hope that they come to me for. Yes, so. and I push back even when testing out people, you won't get a large enough sample size to really know. Yeah. At first. Mm. So sometimes that means pushing forward even if everybody's telling you no. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm still trying to get us to think critically about it because while I say feedback is good, sometimes feedback is bad. People tell you they want something that you don't really yeah, want long term. Yeah, So just just it's good that you're thinking about it and focusing on fun. That's great. Fun, interactive, uh, talking to you, relatable. So, whichever what you choose or whatever you feel is the right way to go. Yeah. Just understanding it and making sure that's clear through the messaging, clear through the articles, that you're not switching up styles yeah. mm -hmm. too much. Awesome. I, I'm sorry. So, I just want some clarification. You're saying you have to choose between relatability and being interactive? I don't know. I'm not saying you have to choose. I said, but one will still be. Like there's still You're one. Right. One is the superior mm. thing. You may have the secondary traits, but this is one thing that you're going to stick with. And then the second, you may have all of them eventually. But what's the number one thing for now? And if I'm standing here in 2019, how am I going to be able to project which way is the better path to take, um, like an Amazon ten years down the road? I don't think Amazon knew the answer. Yeah. It's, this is we, we have hindsight. It's like mm -hmm. you don't know the answer, so you can still so pivot. What would guide you? Would guide you? <laughs> right here. I mean, yes, absolutely. I am. I'm. I'm all for that. But I'm just like, if something new is on the horizon, like what antennas do I need to have up to be able to detect that my population is changing, and I need to. Move in that time. Yeah. So I, Henry, did you have something to say? No. no, I was going to say you can just ask your customers, right? Like, well, my customers are not long term over a period of time. I mean, the most time I would have it with anyone is three years. So unless they keep on having babies, <laughs> it's kind of. But John used to do something to do with an old data scientist, and I've been doing a, a building of relative marketing for uh, decades of behavior. 
And then I realized that the EQ, as I mentioned before, like for me is in the future, um, there are a lot of knowledges, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of a computer, and then I can see more of a 4C, that EQ, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that is of the, actually the future. So you um, to that. <laughs> Okay. Just, just but that's just my opinion. Right. So, yeah, we, we can see big trends, right? Uh, and one, I, I like to preface with this. As I said, very few people actually know the future 10, 20 years out. It changes too dramatically. Um, most of the big companies, as they have these core tenants, but they've actually pivoted a lot. Amazon has done things. In, Amazon actually has a lot of acquisitions. Um, don't get mad at me, Mr. Bezos. But uh, he has several... Uh, hundred million dollar deals of acquiring companies because he thought they were going to go into this that had failed and fallen short. Mm -hmm. But you're miss so so don't worry about making a mistake. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about making you can you can't pick it later. My thing is just to put you on the thing that's the you believe is the most likely to succeed. It may still fail, but it's fine. Maybe later you'll have to pivot. We don't want you to, but that's okay. That that's okay. <coughs> now with that said, to think for um, to think forward. Uh, you'll probably add more capabilities in the future. You'll pivot in the future, maybe. But let's let's think about the trends that's taken on. Um, we're going to have more um, internet um, connectivity, right? So that's going to affect your business um, somehow. Uh, the world is getting more connected. Maybe you're going to need to be able to go global to compete. Maybe you're going to have the scale to compete. Two, not two, three. S schooling, I believe, is going to change. Now, that's a belief. Oh, yeah. That's mm -hmm. a belief, but that that's my that's my. It's going to change. So those yeah. are three big market movers that relate to you that you should think about, mm -hmm. right? So so that's that's what I, I would position myself to think that. Then on top of that, uh, sorry, what, on top of that, the way you always your quickest, to, you have to be close to the customer, like Henry said. Always observing, always learning. Mm -hmm. um, Sam Walton, uh, the way he built, um, the way he built Walmart, the Walmart dynasty, uh, he would always go into his competitor stores. And he's, he's just walking around with a long notebook. Sometimes he had a recorder, and they would catch him and kick him out. <laughs> but he would just walk around and always learning. Like the people who truly, like um, even Bezos, right? We're talking about Amazon. He, uh, he, I don't know how many days. I know it's at least one. But I don't know. How, Every single person in the company has to be on the customer service lines at least one day out of the year. Um, for a, such a huge company, even if you're the VPC or whatever, you have to be on the uh, customers. You guys don't even know about Amazon customer service because you don't need it. But that's because they, they've done so much customer service, they're, they're attacking problems on the front end. Mm -hmm. But if everybody has to, you have to be close to your client. You have to be close to the children. You have to be close to the parents, maybe close to the school. So you're seeing things ahead of time. You, you have your hand on the pulse. You have your finger on the pulse. So that that's that's something that you, regardless of what plan you pick out, you always have to be there. Mm -hmm. So you're testing that out, all right? Just like, uh, see, Josh, people say, I don't know. People say he, um, he didn't ask people for the advice, but I believe he was just always observing people. Always observing customers, always observing how people interacted with things. Um, because that's what visionaries, a lot, a lot of them do. They just watch. They watch, they observe, they predict. All right. Anybody else for their business? I was. I had a question about the. Uh, you you mentioned about fun and creative way to engage with your customers, the clients, and you uh, mentioned about the. You found a voice, so uh, your voice. So I, I want you to have some kind of uh, opinions from other people for your opinion uh, regarding using of character for uh, a business. Like for example, character, what can I say? Um, not logo, a symbol. Uh, not symbol, not logo, but uh, character, like cartoon character oh. for the social, social, not my business. <laughs> So just a first service. So, um, um, so instead of uh, instead of not using any of a character, I was like thinking if I have to talk about emotional support, then I use that person um, 
that is uh, based on something for the depression base and then how to prevent and then if I have to give the social service and then I have to uh, uh, use some kind of uh, character is doing something and then um, send out that oh this is the how you can get the uh, Medicaid expansion or something. So so you're um, talking about building um, a character. Yeah, well, a like custom made character them. just for your business so yes. that when anybody it, sees it, they know. Yes, the I, I, I know it's, like a, it, it's good for it, it, it makes sense for the Hispanic population, but I don't know. I've never seen it in, in America so much, but in Korea, or yes, the, yes, yes, the Asian community, yeah, um, and the Hispanic community has a lot of uh, manga, <laughs> some, some kind of um, things going on, but. So one, I, I would say, so that has been a big, actually it's been big in the U.S., um, not so much this century, um, but in the 20th century, uh, companies started, I think it was after the 40s, don't quote me on this, uh, 40s or 50s companies started acting. Um, adding mascots, mm -hmm. uh, characters, in yes. order to make their brand more relatable, more personable. Um, for example, we have uh, the Michelin Man, uh, the tire guy, like, mm -hmm. tire guy, uh, Jolly Green Giant, I don't know, it's like a pea company, I believe. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a bunch of, uh, there's a bunch of, and even South America, one of the, but they use an American ad company, so maybe that's an American idea. Uh, so that's okay. I would say what I would say, regardless of what you do, don't use a smiley. I mean, don't use a frown face. Mm. Because think about it. Um, if you see somebody with a frown, how do you react? Stand. Yeah, exactly. Right. If you stay away. If you see somebody smile, you're more likely to smile back. We react to these things. Um, for you, what I would say, I would um, your company. If you're the way you're dealing with, maybe. Now that we have a better technology, maybe something that we, um, I, I don't like things that are forced, like so a static face, like even if I see somebody smiling and I'm coming to them at a, like that, they, I'm not gonna like that either, if you just smile, you ever, I wanna see some response. So maybe more of a reactive, um, especially as technology is getting better, uh, whether it's an uh, emoticon, I guess they're calling them now, I don't know what they call, but something that's reactive to them as they're talking or they're interacting, building something out. Oh. That's really uh, showing that it, it brings, even if it's a chat box or your Twitter, it just seems something that a face that's reacting to the most. It's that EQ that we talk, emotional intelligence that we're talking about. It just seems fa fa facial expressions that really kind of take. I'm paying attention to you. Mm -hmm. I'm having feelings for what you're telling me. Mm -hmm. So do, building something like that. If I was going, up, if I was creating a a mascot for your company, for your, like, that's what I would say for you because it's an emotional thing that you're doing. You're dealing with people who have a, are dealing with other people. You're dealing with emotional people who are dealing with people who <laughs> are dealing with emotion. So it, it's it's double layered. So that's what I would say for you. All right. so my observation was that uh, from observing um, airline companies like uh, Delta, and then nobody actually pay attention for the safety. <laughs> but then I would listen to it. But then I realized a lot of people pay attention for uh, when they change to the court, um, take out all the, the pictorious kind of thing, but then they change it, uh, they focus, uh, they kind of uh, uh, pay, pay attention for uh, when they change it as, uh, it's not cartoony, but illustration like New York Times. Then people more pay attention, and then they uh, lost their attention. Then then they change it to the obnoxious kind of uh, um, strange things, like they put the animals in the <laughs> animals in the uh, the seats and things like that. Then then the people actually watch that. So, what do you mean? Yeah, I uh, yeah, I don't. That is something that you really have to think hard about um, because it has to be something people like. But makes sense when related. It, it's weird because it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense. Um, for example, Toys R Us, right? I don't know. Well, well we grew up with. I'm not talking about <laughs> teenagers. Uh, Toys R Us. They had the giraffe, right? We don't remember, but the giraffe was really cool, right? So it's it's it can be it still can be an animal, it can be something, but it has to make sense. Um, 
somehow with your company. Mm -hmm. Even though they don't really make sense, but it still has to make sense. It's, it's paradoxical. Yes. So I have a question in regards to the restaurant business sure. and mm -hmm. food. So um, China is, you're highlighting home cooking. How does this affect in regards to in regards to him staying relevant? I don't know if that's the word. Mm -hmm. um, years down the road, is his niche to stay the same? Is it to have branches of his location as food trucks? Is it like mm -hmm. like what exactly will keep him because? People are really using food as an experience, mm -hmm. um, and it's no longer just because you're hungry. Mm -hmm. You know, business deals are made over food and that sort of thing. So, I guess I'm wondering, from a standpoint of a business that is in one location and you need to crank out the same excellence to build the trust to have your repeat. Um, customers to be able to have the word of mouth for the advocacy like what else does he need to do to stay because New York is filled with very cheap Chinese restaurants I personally stop going to <laughs> um, so I'm just wondering how can he break out of that mindset for persons who are tired of not getting really good quality food, the environment, everything has changed. How does he do that? My observation was that in, in front of our school, there are like ten or ten of the truck like where after everything is Chinese, and everybody comes there. Not only a Chinese student or uh, all the staffs and from all different um, yeah. backgrounds, people go there and wait actually, it takes time, and they wait for three minutes to cook. And then I saw their uh, advertisement was kind of, they make it as traditional look. Mm. That's interesting, right? So they make it very traditional look, 1980s or something. So, mm. so the, that attracted the people and then they are always in the long line. So, mm. So I've discussed with Henry a bit deeper than he's been able to share here oh. about his company. So I, what I'll start with, I don't, it's not a traditional Chinese restaurant, it's healthy Chinese, mm -hmm. correct? Well, the idea is that traditional is healthier mm -hmm. compared to Sorry, American so, Chinese food. Yes, that's what, yes, it's not American Chinese, it's healthier traditional Chinese food. So that that's the first, and for me, and that already, from mm -hmm. my experience with American Chinese restaurants, um, I don't know much about China. Chinese Chinese restaurants, which I shouldn't have to say, but I do. Uh, that that's already pulls them outside of that box. Okay. So they're not really they're competing with them, but they're not really competing with them. It's, right. it's they're, they're targeting two different types of customer. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one thing. Uh, with with any and I'm going to touch him, but with any business, any plan, any brand, you're going to have down cycles where that message doesn't relate to clients. Like we can look through the history of any long-running company and we'll see a down cycle or something because at certain points the population taste changed away sometimes they come back sometimes they don't mm -hmm. so don't always focus so that doesn't mean once it changes you go sometimes if you just have mm -hmm. to stay and wait it out right and wait it out so there's go going to be cycles mm -hmm. all right there's, and i want to there's going to be cycles uh with that said i i do feel ex Experience has always been part of food. It's just now it's moving from just high flying sex to general people having more food. But even in the future, uh, while people are looking for this experience that may stay, I think um, we, this is 20, 30 years out, we may get more to like pill capsule type foods um, as technology goes. So, what? <laughs> sorry, no, it was really? Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. But if we do, I, I just I have to look at these things. If we do, that changes things. Maybe it does, maybe mm -hmm. doesn't. So he will have to plan accordingly. But his job is to position himself with each stage going forward, and not to try to tackle everything now. Just mm -hmm. know, hey, this is on. Now you know this is on the horizon. 
what will we do if this comes up? Maybe we will make it more like an uh, experience. Maybe we'll start thinking of Circus Soleil at bringing people in here mm -hmm. to enjoy, like really going outside the box, like, oh, this is not. Okay, and yeah, exactly. So moving that. Uh, what I would say with him, um, and I think I told you this before, I don't know, maybe. Sorry. Okay, maybe I'll tell you after we start recording. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you after we start recording. But uh, there's a way that I would attack it um, for advertising and marketing to get it out. Yes, so that's that, and, and just just do. He's gonna learn. Like there's growing pains, it may be successful at first, it may take a while to build up, but they're gonna learn and they're gonna keep going forward. And also they're in New Jersey, so that may insulate insulate them a bit. It's in Jersey. It's in Jersey. Mm. You see, I never picked that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was in New York. Yeah, it's in Jersey City. Uh, Jersey City. Yeah. Is there a high Chinese population there? Yes. So, that's that. Okay. How, how long is the, uh, the uh, downside for usually? Oh, it depends on the industry, it depends on. Because you, you have, you have uh, economic down cycles, or you might have taste preferences, right? For example, uh, the luxury market, when we had the recent 2008 crash, that plummeted, sales of Gucci, Louis Vuitton, et cetera, et cetera, plummeted um, because of that. But that was due to economics rather than taste. Uh, then you have people who, for one reason or another, just stop having a taste for certain things. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just, uh, for example, I think a good example of that is IBM versus Apple, right? Um, well, most of us are, are too young to represent remember that but IBM used to, they still do somewhat control all of the computer market right mm -hmm. and then that's why Apple had their famous 1984 commercial um, if you haven't seen it you definitely should watch it it's one of the best commercials of all time where they use the position of um, IBM as being this monotonous just everybody doing it um, industry type uh, industry type computer where it's just boring it's bland it's corporate and they position Apple as in the, this is the 80s, as a female um, coming through, breaking through, breaking up this group of men, just blindfolded, whatever, boom, mm. and really being different. And that's what Apple really has. If you look at the brand, it's I. That's why everything's mm. I. I'm individual. Mm. I'm unique. Mm. And that's, that's what, it's that creative. And from that creative, we think it's cool because we usually think, now we think creatives are cool. Back in the day, maybe artsy people weren't. Mm -hmm. So it's a different, like, brand's taste change, <laughs> yeah, right? But these all things change, so something that makes you strong now may make you weak later, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe you bounce back. All right. Okay. Uh, any other questions for that? How do you... So we're talking, I'm still thinking about the whole future thing. Cause oh, yeah. Yeah. that, um, how do you like, especially for us, right? Or for my kind of business. Mm -hmm. So, um, even just, I think last year they had the first, uh, baby or fetus in outside of utero growing. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm like, um, you know, that's really interesting. How do I play into this? Um, and I know as a doula, our um, business is more for advocating. So I'm like, okay, do I advocate for them and tell them, hey, if you don't want to have a baby, you can always take uh, your conception process and do it outside of utero, like utero. I don't know. Um, and so it's like how um, in New York City specifically, what I'm noticing is that people really want, there are maybe in this community here, people really want to get back to the basics of tradition. They're not really looking forward into like, oh, I want to have a child outside of utero. That's so nice. I'm sure it'll go like that some way, somehow. I have no idea. Um, but like in reaching those people, what do you do? So so it's this, the problem in the future is the same problem as now, right? Picking your battlegrounds. 
Mm -hmm. um, what are you going to stand up for? As I said, um, Amazon didn't know they were going to surpass Barnes and Nobles. They didn't know that. Yeah. They didn't know that. So you pick your ground stand for it. And some people, Barnes and Nobles still exist. Like sometimes you will stay, you may be not, but you still exist. So there's certain people who are going to want specific services, even if we do um, outside of Euro. Uh, there's people who still want to have the baby themselves because right. that's nine months that you connect to the baby rather than it being outside. Some mothers will want that, other mm -hmm. mothers won't. Um, so you don't always have to look, like, how am I going to be always at the forefront? Right. Okay, I see this now, you know there's this opportunity where something can change. Okay, can I create an out for myself where, okay, if this change, I can pivot easily or I'm just going to focus on this and no matter what happens, this is what I'm doing. Right. Um, and just just being out there, just uh, regardless of what I think, position yourself as an expert, um, publishing articles, doing research, uh, talking, creating seminars, uh, and top of your educational uh, videos, um, teaching, all of that. Doing that and keep your hand on the pulse will help you. And actually, for me, I think it's harder to think when I'm thinking future. Um, thinking. Of for the future, especially for the future, it's harder for me to think about a specific location than globally. Mm. Because there's just so, um, globally it takes a lot of things to change things globally. Right, Let's right. take a look at, you're under the state, you're under the nation, and you're under the globe. So like several different factors can just change for something rather for mm. the whole thing. It's a little bit, I think, easier to predict what will happen around most of the goals than to act in a specific city, even a city as big as New York City. Right. When I think of you as an educator, I'm thinking, as um, Achamboro was saying, let's say you are for the mom keeping the baby inside. Mm -hmm. As an educator, you can be possibly trusted as a person to educate others as to what are other options of birth. Okay. So even if that, even if people may not become your clients. If mm -hmm. you become the person they go to on all things child yeah. birth child related, related. Mm -hmm. then you have already cut a niche for yourself because some people are very rigid in this is what I will do, this is the only thing that I will do, mm -hmm. and I will not veer off from it, and I have more than enough clients to keep me mm -hmm. happy, but instead of actually trying to provide a service, maybe for you it's just educating about it. Mm -hmm when you have enough knowledge about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think this, for you, with education and research and the extended way you are, you stand, um, in terms of advice, I think you really need to focus on, um, and I think some people miss this, there's a, being able to find uh, the truth, being able to find what's right and advocate what's the best thing you do. So and yeah, yeah, but if it's so hard for you, who you have more expertise than most mothers will, how hard it is, that's why I'm saying maybe that's where you position yourself because there's a big difference between knowledge and wisdom, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of knowledge out there. We have Google, we have all these search engines, we have all this information, all these brochures. Right. But wisdom, experience, knowing the truth, knowing the right thing, right? That's you can't find that on Google. Mm -hmm. You can't, Google makes it. But maybe it's right, maybe it's not. To me, it's just information. You need somebody who actually has wisdom to parse through that information and say, okay, Google's telling me the right thing, Google's telling me the wrong thing. And if you can position yourself as somebody who's wise, mm -hmm. who's, the, who's the person who knows, gives advice, regardless of how things turn, that's the safe ground mm -hmm. for me. I receive it, y'all. Thank you. All right, so let's go on to the fourth. Thing, and the most important thing for me after building trust. Does anybody remember what it is? It's a very high log Yes, mm -hmm. advocacy. Now, so what is building advocacy? I'll have Maggie start because we have some advocates. You don't, may not know it, but you do. Um, okay, so I guess based off of your comment earlier, <laughs> it's um, allowing people to I guess, um, speak about your business on your behalf, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I think this is something that I, I really, I, just like building trust, I almost never see this in 
from hearing from other people talking marketing, <laughs> social media, anything. Nobody talks about building habits. That's all we, all, for us, any big important purchase we have, we hear from our friends or we hear from somebody we trust, we get the advice when we get this purchase or they convince us to do this thing, right? How many of you have convinced a friend to do something because you think it's best for them, right? So what, so I think it's such a, um, interesting that people don't focus on this and, I, and I, that's why I left this for last uh, because I want you, you want to turn people into your advocates. Now let's talk about what turns you into an advocate? What would make you advocate for product or service? So I am like the biggest Wix advocate out there that one day they're going to pay me for this, quote me on that. Because I really am and the reason why is because of there's a few things. One, you want to um, explain Wix for everybody who doesn't do websites? Huh? Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. Wix, for those who don't know what it is, is just a simple solution to create your, to build a website. Um, they make it super user friendly um, and it's, it's easy. It's just a few steps because they have templates as well. Yeah, I um, yeah but um, there's a few reasons why I'm such a big advocate, but the main thing is um, that sold me is their community actually. Um, they have a Wix lounge here and I used to be in their co-working pro um, program when I was building my fashion company. And it just, they offered so many different workshops and for free and stuff for you to build your business. And the co-working program was also free. And it just like opened up my eyes. Like they're really into helping people to buy, to build their website. So whatever they can do to help you to build a better business and build your website, like, so you can build a better business. Like that really just like, um, it just, it, it captured me. And so what's, and to answer your question is um, why am I such a big advocate? Because I, I really, like, I think from, they weren't as strong in terms of customer service, in terms of, like, calling, because they were based on Tel Aviv, but now they fixed that problem um, when I first started with them. But um, just, yeah, I've learned to, like, trust them. I've learned to see what, you know, their advice and the things that they've given, um, how it affects my business, and I guess those are, yeah, I, I could go on forever because I could tell you some stories, but I'm not going to, but yeah. But, yeah, but you see, that's an advocate. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's an advocate. So what about the rest of you? I'm going to touch on that story a little bit more. <clears throat> so recently, I changed it from uh, my bank's from Chase to Amex, everything. Before to what bank? To Amex, American Express. Mm -hmm. To buy uh, credit cards and and uh, bank accounts, everything. Okay. Because, um, they, and then they asked me the question when they go, <laughs> that uh, are, are you going to uh, the re the refer the, the other people or something. But then the uh, one big reason was that the bank is supposed to have a higher interest rate, and then the two, the bank is supposed to give me more profit. But then, um, which is a high interest rate, right? <laughs> or the um, um, kind of points. But then I, uh, and then they, they do that, that's why. So um, the business is supposed to do what it's supposed to do. That's the bottom line. So I, that's, um, that's why I'm advocating American Express, then Citibank or Chase Bank. <laughs> <laughs> but I have nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I found myself to advocating that to my, my friends. Because see, this has a higher <coughs> interest rate <laughs> and has a better point. <laughs> okay, for me, there's recently I found a, um, a restaurant around my uh, client's office, and I literally will not close my mouth about this restaurant. Um, <laughs> it has I tell everybody, I had a, um, Sam wasn't here, but he asked me to have a meeting. I had a meeting with Sam and uh, I told him, hey, let's go there. And any, er, anybody who's around me for more than a day uh, at this client's space will say, will know that I love this restaurant. And the reason why I love it is because one, when I ended up there, I'm not too familiar with the East Midtown, um, East Midtown, uh, and, it, and I wanted seafood. But as everyone knows, seafood is expensive. <laughs> See, especially in New York. You, you do? Oh, okay, okay. Well, let me say, just in, uh, <laughs> uh, so 
yeah, I, I would, seafood's super expensive, whatever. Um, and finally, after like a month and a half, I found this place, and it's called the Juicy, Juicy Crab or something? Juicy Seafood. It's a really weird name. It's a really <laughs> weird name. But it's, oh, it's called Juicy Seafood. Um, I'll double check that. And I, I don't advocate for restaurants. Like my favorite place actually is Fogo de Chao. Um, it's a Brazilian steakhouse here, um, mm -hmm. just because I like Kanya and having a buffet of meat. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, did you? This place it has one. It has seafood, of course, and but I was a little afraid to go inside. But then the lunch specials are amazing. Uh, seven fifty, seven dollars fifty cents for eight wow. fifty for like fried seafood or eight fifty for broiled seafood. Um, and I didn't even think that was possible, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they do it, but they do. And the people are so friendly. It's so nice. It's relaxed. It's laid back. I tell everybody to come. Um, so if you're ever around 53rd and 3rd Avenue, uh, just let me know. <laughs> you probably find me there. Uh, so I actually wrote a Google review. I was going, that's how I never write Google reviews. I, I met, but I saw they weren't getting enough business and I was like, no, we have to change this. <laughs> so I was going to write Yelp, but Yelp wanted me to sign in and I'm not that much of an advocate. So I, <laughs> so I switched over to Google so and <laughs> I switched over to Google and wrote a review for them. But uh, it's, it's, and that's the essence, right? When something, one is so superior in terms of, uh, or you're so frustrated with another thing that you come mm -hmm. in, like, uh, you sold like with American Express versus Citibank or the other banks, uh, not an endorsement. Uh, <laughs> uh, you 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 want to tell other people because you finally found something that's not not frustrating you anymore, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. right? Uh, or for me, when I find amazing value with something I want, I want to share because I want other people to enjoy this and also save money. Mm -hmm. Or, but I think what's the most unique, actually, if we go um, to Maggie's experience, and this is what really capture what builds advocacy mm -hmm. once you go so, so much above the expected level of service that's when you build advocacy or the expected quality of product that's when you build advocacy right you see that's why she because they, they're going so much further beyond what you what you think of when you think of a website company what you think they they're helping her through this stage it's not just they went past typical customer service Right, where they're having tutorials, programs, things, a support group to really help a bit. So if you do that with your business, that will really build true advocates for your business. Mm -hmm. And you have to think about going so far beyond the service. That's how you build advocates and get referrals. Um, so that's one way you build advocates. Uh, all right, so think about that. Think about doing so. So you, it may be for you, adding a little treat in the bag. Right? Like a little free thing that they can order, it doesn't say on the menu. Don't tell them it's coming. Don't tell somebody it's coming. It's a little thing that you don't have to get mm -hmm. something extra, right? So things like that. So build, uh, think of creative ways to build advocacy with your company. Now there are, I won't say non-creative, but there's less organic ways where uh, you can have referral fees. Where if somebody refers you, they get cut back they get a free service, they get something, right? Mm -hmm. Uber. Mm -hmm. Exactly, right? Most of Uber, Airbnb, that's one of their biggest growth paths, especially uh, tech-based companies. They have this $5, $10, <coughs> thing, something bonus sign-up thing, right? How do they do this? You right? How did the biggest Right, exactly. <laughs> yes. In the beginning, nobody had it. So I referred everybody. I got my mail was paid every single day. <laughs> and just like that, start off big. Yeah. Start what? off big. What that? I sorry, I missed that. What we were saying, like, um, based off the like Uber, Uber Eats used to have fifteen dollar referral um, uh, discount, and then they went down to five. So Ooh, yeah, right. <laughs> sort of big with referrals. Oh, that's beautiful. Right. Wait, say that one more time. Want <laughs> 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 to take that idea real quick? Yeah. So so do this. Go out, conquer, do this, and look at it as a marketing expense, right? Because um, think if you look at we say three dollars a day for an ad, right? But mm -hmm depending on your level of service, that's not going to convert many people. It may get you a few leads, right? So if you bump it 15, 20, 25 dollars for somebody to recommend directly, um, then 
and it's a marketing expense and that comes in as you get more people mm-hmm. you can lower that a little bit as you get more people you can lower that but usually as you get more people you get economies of scale so your expenses will go down anyway so bounce mm-hmm. up. so you can lower keep it the same or lower it it's up to you but just stimulate people get people to want to talk about you until you're able to build that exceptional service mm-hmm. that really makes people talk about you again but even if you do that I still will say build it out get those promotions Mm-hmm. Some businesses, what they do is that they will give you that referral discount when the person uses a code mm-hmm. that you have given them. And so if they make a purchase, the person who you refer to gets a cut and you get a cut. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, oh, win-win. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, or even this, like just a few months ago, um, some of the people from the headquarters in Wix came and like, contacted me and say, um, and said if I give them some feedback on my, like based off of some of the new things that they're coming out and off of my website, they give me a hundred dollar Amazon gift card or a free um, premium plan. Now the premium plan would make more sense, but I didn't go with that. But I would have done it for free, to be honest. If they email me, I would have done it for free because that's how much I mm-hmm. like. I really am <laughs> the advocate of this company. But um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's, you see, you see, like get people to be that passionate about you. Yeah. And some people will do for free. Because my mom, she, she brought me to her tax person. She's been trying to get me to this person for a while. Uh, she brought me to a tax person. Then she was referring other people. She was sitting down. Like, we got to go. And she calling other people. Hey, did you come to the tax person yet? <laughs> and then the tax person says, oh, yeah, thanks for sending me this person. She was trying to give her, my mom some money. My mom was like, no. No, don't take. I don't I don't want it. I just like. So some people, if they, that's how you know somebody's super passionate about you. So they're actually doing something right that they won't take. But if, if they take it, it's fine. Yeah. I don't want you to be like, mm. <coughs> give it, enjoy. <laughs> They're bringing in clients to you, mm. right? They're bringing in clients to you, so do that, mm. right? All right? Yeah. Wow, that's wisdom right there. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Okay. All right. Any questions? Any other tips? I'm gonna turn off the camera. Or can one of you ladies just stop the video?